In this part we will have a look at the potential method that we will use to prove amortized running times for the display function. So let's first try to get some intuition why the display function is fast. And with fast we mean amortized order of log n time usually. So we have the following tree. And we want to define some weights first. For this example, I just set the weight of every key to 1. Later we will pick different weights. But for now, let's just say every key has a weight of 1. And this capital W is the sum of all the weights. Here it is just n. And now we want to define the sum of all weights for subtrees. So all the leaves have s of x1. This guy here in its subtree there are three nodes, 1 to 3, so this is sum of weights 3, this has 4, this here has 6, 7, here we have a 2, a 3, and a 6, a 14, and a 15. So how does this help us? We want to mark the edges, we want to have good edges and bad edges. And the good edges we make blue, the bad edges we make red. We mark an edge as a good or a blue edge if the sum of weights of the child is at most the sum of weights of the parents divided by 2. So that means that we lose at least half of the nodes of the subtree if we follow a blue edge. And otherwise we mark it as a red edge. Let's again have a look at this example. Here we go from 3 to 1. 1 is less or equal to half of 3, so this is blue and this also. Here we go from 4 to 3, that's more than half, so it's a red edge. From 6 to 4 is more than half, so this is red, and 6 to 1 this is blue. Here 2 to 1, that's exactly half, so it's blue. These are also blue. This one is red from 7 to 6. 6 to 2 is blue, 6 to 3 is blue, 14 to 7, that's half, so this is blue, and this is also blue, and 15 to 14 is red. So we have a bunch of blue edges and some red edges. Now let's say we want to query our key number 3. How much time does it take? Well, it's the length of the path, or we can split it into red and blue edges, so the time to query number 3, or number 6 here, is just the number of red plus number of blue edges on the path. Okay, so far so good. Now, can we say something about these blue edges? Can we somehow give a measure how many blue edges we can have on this path? Do you have an idea? Well, for every blue edge that we take, the sum of the weights is halved, or even less than that. So if we just look at the orange numbers on the path, whenever we take a blue edge, it gets halved. Here it is n, so there can only be log n, or log capital W in the general case, number of blue edges here. So we can just flip this and make this a log w. And log w is good. We want to have log n. But what about these red edges? For those red edges, it can be that the orange number only goes down by one, like from here to here, or here to here, or here to here. And that is terrible, because that means there can be n of those red edges. And that means that one of these paths can be bad. And that is true, we can have long queries in this play tree. But whenever we do have a long path, this 6 here, it will be splayed upwards. And intuitively, the tree will become a bit more balanced whenever we do that, so that later the queries will be faster. And that's something that we have to look at. And that's where the amortization and the potential method comes in. So we want to amortize the red edges. It means if we take a long time, then we do a lot of work in balancing the tree and later things will be much faster. And to analyze that, we use the potential method. So we use 
some potential function, here we use the sum of logs potential. So we sum up the logarithm of all these orange numbers and that tells us the potential of the tree. And the amortized cost of a function is the real cost plus the potential after the function minus the potential before. So if you haven't heard of potential functions before or it has been a long time, this might be a bit confusing. So let's have a look at a smaller, more intuitive example before. So this potential function that represents work that has been paid for but not yet performed. And the amortized cost per step is just the real cost plus the change in the potential. So whenever we pay a lot, but the potential goes down, then the amortized cost is low. If we pay little, then we can increase the potential to still stay inside the amortized cost. And in the end, if we want to figure out how much time did we spend in total, I mean, we have to sum up the real costs, but we can also just sum up all those amortized costs and look at the potential change from the beginning to the end. So we have the sum of the amortized costs plus whatever potential we had in the beginning minus the potential we have in the end. Let's have a look at the following example. We want to have a stack with multipop. In a stack with multipop we have two functions. We can push some number onto the stack and we can pull numbers but not only one, we can pull as many as we want in one step, but we still want it to be efficient. Because in the worst case, if we have n numbers on the stack and we pull all of them, then it takes uh, order of n time, but we want to have amortized still constant time per function. And to do that, we use the potential method. We define the potential function to be the size of the stack. So how does this look like? We have, let's say in the beginning, an empty stack. So the beginning potential is zero. Now we push some number, it gets here, and the potential becomes one. Push another one, potential becomes two. Push another one, potential becomes three. And now we want to pop two numbers, and the potential also goes down by two. Now the real cost that we had was 1 for each of the pushs and k for any pop of k. But let's have a look at the amortized cost with this potential function. Whenever we do a push, we take one time to push it onto the stack and we also increase the potential by one. So the amortized cost for a push is the real cost, which is 1, plus the difference in potential, which is also 1. So the amortized cost of the push is 2. For the pop, we remove k numbers, but we also decrease the potential by k because the size of the stack becomes lower by k. So the amortized cost here is k plus the difference in potential, which is minus k, so it is 0. That means that the push operation can pays for everything that we do in the pop operation. And the pop operation doesn't have to pay for itself, it's already done by these. And intuitively you could also say, well, all those numbers that you add, they can only be removed once, so every number gets added once and removed once, so it is only looked at twice. And then you also get to amortized a running time when well, that is linear. So the total cost here is we have the potential in the beginning, which is a zero, minus the potential in the end, how many are still on the stack in the end, plus the amortized cost. Well, how large is the amortized cost? For both of these functions, we have a 2 or a 0, so in the worst case, after n operations, we have spent 2n on the amortized costs. And to figure out how much this is, we need some bounds. Well, if we assume that it was 0 in the beginning, then this is a 0, so we need some 
lower bound on what it is in the end, where it cannot be less than zero. So this here is at most a zero. So the total cost is at most 2n. And that means the total cost is linear and the amortized cost per operation is constant. And this is something that we also want to use for the splay trees. We have these operation spirit splay does not take a long time and there the potential might increase, it might become more unbalanced. But then we have some where it takes a long time, we have to take a long path. But then by these play operations we have to decrease the potential so that in the end we get to a good running time. And in the next part we want to analyze what the amortized running time of this play function is with this potential function.